Welcome back to Taja's Cabin, aka Lakeside Cabin. I am Nakrasen, and this is part 12. And as the title indicates, this is the final episode in the series. A little sad to say that, actually. I'm kind of enjoying this. You know, I couldn't wait for this thing to be done, and now it is, and it's like, uh, I'm a little bummed. But uh, we've got a lot to talk about here, so let's just jump right into it. One of the things I mentioned, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the last episode, but I know I mentioned it in the past. I talked about putting a statue or water, uh, uh, a pond or something where skeletons and stuff were, and I've gone ahead and done that. So here's Azura, finally. And uh, it's just pretty simple to make. I just pushed the ground down a little bit, put in the water, I uh, grabbed a bunch of different stones and resized them and lined them around here. There was already three nightshade plants out here, so I just added a few more. And I found one rock that had a real nice flat, semi-flat top on it, which is what I've got Azura sitting on here. And this was actually a rock that I had inside the house where Meridia is. I had Meridia standing on this at one time. That didn't look too bad, but I ended up going with... Uh, that I guess it's a shrine of Mayrim Stagon. But I uh, took some small waterfalls and shrunk them down even more and got those squirting out of her hands and uh, little uh, splashing water effects down here on the surface of the water. So, yeah, it looks okay. I kind of like it. There is also a light source out here. And it's a uh, uh, bluish in color. I believe it's the same one I had down at the smelter in the basement. And its emittance is set, so it, it, it'll come on in the evening. And we'll get a look at that later. Uh, and I think, ironically enough, the name of that light source is Azura Blue. So, there you go. But it looks nice. It, it she, she looks... You can see it without... Well... We'll see later. I, I like it because you can you can clearly see her, but she doesn't look lit up. So I quite I kind of like how that looks. Okay, the last episode I also talked about one of the major things I still had to do was the nav meshing, and I was still busy fixing things. And I said if I ever get done fixing things, then I'll go ahead and nav mesh. So I finally got done fixing things, and I went ahead and nav meshed. I've got the nav mesh removed from within the the shell of the building and just around the outside edges. So I think the nav mesh comes up to probably around here. But of course it is nav meshed up the stairs to the front door and on the front porch. It is nav meshed all through the garden here. And in parts back here, I say in parts because that's a straight drop right there. I did not nav mesh under here. I didn't see the point of it, but it is nav meshed up these stairs, all across the deck here, down those stairs on the dock, on this deck, so all these NPCs can get to the, all these benches and use them. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, it's nav meshed down these stairs and all across here and right up to this door. And the interior is completely nav meshed as well. Matter of fact, let's go on in. We've got to take a look at a couple things in here. Well, you know what? Let's start down in the basement. So, as I said, everything is nav meshed. Uh, the basement, first floor, second floor. And interesting thing about that is there's a, there's a little tool you can use to test your nav mesh for any bed. You're, you're basically making little triangles on the ground if you're not familiar with it. And uh, you're, you're creating a pathway where NPCs can go. But there's a little tool that'll tell you if your nav mesh is correct or if you have a, a bad triangle or a bad nav mesh somewhere. 
and uh, I tested it after nav mesh in the interior and I had zero bad nav meshes so I was like wow considering that's only the second time I ever nav meshed uh, the first time was when the basement was here originally if you remember I, I did nav mesh that and that was the first time I'd nav mesh so and considering it was only the second time I nav meshed it uh, I felt pretty good about that and the exterior there was only three uh, one was in the water. I had to make that a water nav mesh and there were two little triangles uh, Just outside the back door. I don't know what was wrong with them. They look fine But I deleted those and I put two more down in basically the exact same place and it seemed to like that so um, The nav meshing went pretty well uh, I also talked about the lighting problem that I was having upstairs yeah, if you remember when I was walking towards these lights, they would come on. When I walked away, they went out. And as you can see, that problem has been fixed. And it took me a week of troubleshooting all kinds of things. I was enabling and disabling light sources and moving things around. And uh, it, it was a nightmare. It's like, this one up here was fine. It didn't have a problem with it. So I put that one over here. And I removed that one, and all of a sudden, it started doing it over there. And the one over here, and this one here, and the one in the dining room here. So I started to think it has something to do with the windows, because all of them that were having problems were near windows. So I actually replaced two of these windows here, and that wasn't it. But I was getting desperate. I was trying all kinds of stuff. And uh, I thought maybe I had too many light sources, so I disabled all but like five or six light sources, and that didn't fix it. Then I thought maybe I had too many actual lights. I mean, the static, you know, chandeliers, candles, that sort of thing. So I started disabling a bunch of those. And uh, wouldn't you know it, the problem went away. So now that I found out, I figured out what the problem was and how to fix it. I don't know why. I just knew how to fix it but what I had to do is I had to get rid of light sources and I kind of figured that every every chandelier every wall sconce every floor sconce they all have candles on them so I thought maybe I just have too many candles so I had up here like I had an, an imperial chandelier it had eight candles on it so I replaced it with this one which has six I did the same thing over there I did the same thing in here and with that one replace those are all imperial chandeliers I replaced those this was a candelabra before it had three candles on it so I replaced it with that one but that's what I was doing I was going around just replacing things if I could and uh, I started to see an improvement but it wasn't enough I ended up having to get rid of uh, several candles uh, you remember here I had all these little flames that were in here on the staff enchanter these were candles that I pushed down into the desk so they had to go and uh, I put diamonds in their places just like in the skeleton's eyes over over there um, I wanted to use a different gem but this was the only thing I had that was round I guess it looks okay uh, let's see what else um, yeah, there was a candle here. I had to get rid of that one. I had a candle here and here. I had to get rid of those. I replaced the candle was here with that one, which I took from the shelf over here. There were two other candles here on the shelf. I got rid of those. I essentially had to go around, look at every light source, and try and decide who stays and who goes. You can see the mannequins a little out of place. They'll, they'll straighten up when you leave the area and come back. They're kind of odd that way. Uh, what else did I do for light sources? I don't think I removed anything else in here. I like these uh, having the, these candle horns on the wall on either side of the door. And I thought for a while I was going to have to get rid of those. But fortunately I was able to remove enough other things that I didn't have to do that. Uh, there were two candles here on the dresser. I had to get rid of those. I had to get rid of one that was on that table. This one was a candelabra. I replaced it with a single 
candle horn. And here in the bedroom, I removed the candle that was on that shelf, the one that was on the desk here. And I had to get rid of the one that was up here on this shelf. I really didn't want to, but I still have the light source anyway, so we still have some illumination. We can see what we're doing. So that that is what I was doing. Once I figured out what the problem was, then I then I had to determine how many candles I had to get rid of for the problem to go away, and then it was just a matter of deciding who stays and who goes. Uh, let's see. Well, so that's fixed. Um, after that, I was doing some testing. I was continuing to test the uh, containers. As you can see, I got, I've got stuff in every container. Jewelry's in there. I put some soul gems in there. You get the idea. So I put things into every container. I would, then I would leave the cell, uh, head off someplace far away, wait a few days, come back, check everything, make sure everything is still there, make sure I can still access it. And I was doing that with the weapon holders as well. So I put weapons in every one of these weapon holders, these, these, all the ones down in the armory. Then uh, again, I would leave for several days, come back, make sure I could still access all these things. So that's... Uh, that was pretty much the extent of the testing. I mean, that's how you test the weapon holders. You know, put them in there and you know, make sure you can still get them back. Because I talked about that problem with the these uh, weapon racks over here. But they seem to be okay. Uh, let me check my notes here. I had to write down some notes because I don't want to miss anything here. Okay, what else? Um... Well, I can talk about some of the last minute changes and then we're going to wait till the evening and check on the lighting again. Uh, but you can see in here, I made this a little less bright. I watched an older video uh, and I liked how the lighting was in that one. So I had it. It was really bright in here last time, but this is a little bit better. And... I made a few small changes. I repositioned this big beam up here. It was uh, a little too far off to one side. Uh, I pushed the stairs back just a little bit because it was poking through the railing here. And then I added another little railing piece here to cover the end. Because you could see through. That's the top of the stairs. You could actually see through that piece. The same as before when it was over here. So I put that there to cover that up. And I moved that light source down here you can clearly see what illumination is it's a lot brighter than I'd like but as this is the gem pit and I want to be able to see all these beautiful colorful gems I'm going to be putting in here I decided to leave that light source as is um, I'm not sure but I I don't remember if I had changed this out last episode uh, the light source here but as you can see this is a shadow casting one and I kind of I kind of like the atmosphere it gives off now. I think that looks really nice. And aside from that, um, I don't think there was anything I had to change in here. Uh, I repositioned the shelf a little bit to line it up with the workbench. It doesn't have to be, but it bugged me. <laughs> it was a little bit to the left of the bench, and, and again, it's it doesn't have to... It doesn't have to be. It doesn't serve any purpose lining it up with that. It just bugged me. I'm kind of that way. Uh, let's see. I don't think there's been any other changes. Oh, uh, over here. I had that one Dwemer flame in the bowl right here. I got rid of that. That was part of the lighting sacrifice. I took the bowl of chores eggs, which was down here, and put that in its place. And over here... Uh, let's see, this is actually, I made statics of these three, three things, and this is a bowl of ash something, I, I don't remember, but I got this, uh, what do you call this, it's a glowing gleam blossom or something from the Dawnguard DLC, I put that in there, make it look like it's growing, and this is a bowl of Netsch jelly.
So it's a little something different. I would have put them up here, but you wouldn't be able to see what's in here. So, yeah. That's it. Uh, let's see. Anything here? Uh, I had to reposition these weapon racks here. They were sitting off the ground. I just load them down to the floor and I replaced the staff that was in here because it was poking into, it was digging into the wall. So I changed it for this Dwemer looking one and I had to reposition the sword a little bit. It was a little bit off. Uh, but there weren't any, oh, I don't know if I showed this before. Uh, I got some dragons here. I didn't like these, those animals. I thought they looked kind of stupid. So. Uh, I brought in a couple of dragons. That looks a little bit better. And aside from that, I don't think there's any changes down here. No significant changes over in this area. All this stuff was here last episode. Um, let's see. Well, uh, because I had to get rid of that light source here, light source that was here, I put this uh, vase in the plant. It's just like what's in the armory, and I think that's it. Well, it's already a quarter to eight, so we'll be able to check the lighting over at the sewer pretty soon. Let's see, anything changing over here? Nothing here other than the light sources I think that's it all right let's go see how the statue looks of course it has to be raining it's still kind of light out let's wait another hour there all right, as you can see, it's, I don't know, I think the illumination is pretty good there. You can, you can see here, it's only, it doesn't really look like lit up that much, just kind of glowing a little bit. I, I, I kind of like how it looks. And we should have, yes, we do have yellow windows. That's perfect. It's working as they should be. Check the ones over here, but I'm sure... They should all be doing the same thing. And this is... These things are... Uh, they won't work when you first arrive. You have to leave the cell and return. A lot of things are like that. The the plantable soils are like that. The I think the mannequins or something with the weapon holders. And I, I did add a uh, lantern down there at the end of the dock. And I had a few items out here that I had to go and set the distant LOD on it, like I forgot to do before. I think it was just the furniture, though. And maybe the dock. It's not a big deal. So, that's that. Uh, let's see, other than testing, I had, I did two more things after testing containers and weapon holders. I loaded up my other character, my main character, which I had Liddy with me at the time. And I brought here, her out here and I tested all the nav mesh. And I made sure she followed me every place where I knew the nav mesh was, which is all out here on these decks. I had her sit in every one of these chairs because you know you can go into the command line and then uh, I had her follow me in and out of every door to make sure those are working correctly. I had her sit in every one of these chairs and we've got a shadow casting light here now. I don't remember if this was here last time but I think it adds a little bit more atmosphere. I would like to make this light source larger, but if I do that, I'm going to interfere with these other light sources, so 
and the ones down below, so I can't go any bigger with it. Uh, like to, but it's still it's a nice it's a nice looking scene. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I had Lydia follow me around all over here. I had her sit in every one of these chairs. I had her sit in every bar stool. I think we started off downstairs, actually. We came in here. I had her use uh, every one of these crafting stations. She would not use the custom ones. She would not use the custom smelter, and the custom staff enchanter, or the custom enchanter. But she would use everything else. I had her get on the grindstone, use the anvil, the tanning rack, the workbench, the alchemy lab. Uh, no problem. I had her follow me into here. We ran around in here for a little bit. I had her sit in these two chairs. Uh, had her follow me up the stairs. Walk around the dining room, the kitchen, and again I had her uh, had her sit in every one of these chairs. Follow me around the living room. Had her follow me up the stairs. Down at the end here. Had her uh, lay down the bed. Had her sit in that chair. Had her sit in these two chairs. Had her sit in these two chairs. Had her sit in that chair. So everything, I think I even had her use these two. These two things here, I think. Uh, yeah, everything was everything was working, working like it's supposed to. She followed me everywhere around the house. So nav meshing looks good. Uh, let me check my notes here again. So I want to make sure I don't miss anything since this is the last episode. Oh, I wish it wasn't raining out here. One of the things that I'm going to look into before, if I put this on a Nexus and before I do, is to see what I got to do to get the rain sounds inside the building. I really like to have that atmosphere if if I can. I, I, I haven't found any information on that yet. So, but, uh, I, I got some, I dropped some messages a few places, so I'm hoping to hear something soon. Okay, the only other thing I did after doing all the testing, I talked about doing a final walkthrough. And that was the last thing I did before making this video. And I did walk through, I started downstairs in the smithing area. And, uh, I was actually, you know, writing all this stuff down. And I went and I looked at every single item. I was just walking around here slow. And I looked at every single item. The table, the floor, the walls, the ceilings. Oh yeah, I did have to add a ceiling in here. It's a little bit below the floor above. Because the floor above is actually acting as the floor for the first floor. And the ceiling for down here. If you're following me there. Uh, so I put in this separate piece because in between here I have a plane marker. Sometimes I think it's called an occlusion plane. And what that does, <clears throat> it, it helps improve performance because if I'm down here, the game doesn't need to render what's in the living room because I can't see it. So it's just to help improve performance. But I went through here and I looked at every single thing in here. Every, I mean, literally top to bottom, room by room, and uh, made a list of everything that had to be fixed. And I still ended up with 38 things on that list. And I thought I had uh, everything fixed before. But actually, not everything on that list was a problem. Some were things I just didn't like the look of. And so it's like, well, try something else here. Try something there. Um, let's see. Let's, let's wait a couple hours because I want to see. I'd like to see what it looks like outside without the rain. So hopefully it'll stop. Nope. Okay. No problem. Oh wait, now it's letting up. Okay, well. Okay, we've got a little bit of mist and fog out here too, so. I don't know. I, I like that. I think that looks better than uh, a bunch of graves, you know. So, uh, yeah, I went room by room, 
basement to up to the second floor and made a list of everything that needed to be fixed. I went and fixed all those. And I think during the process of, of that, I found one other thing. So I think everything is pretty well done. So the only thing, well, I was going to say this is, um, this is about it. Uh, now I, I I've enjoyed making this series. It's been uh, it's been a long journey. It's been seven eight months I think, and you know of course some of that was delayed to my own mistakes. But you know, and then there was moving the basement back inside that delayed things a little bit too. But uh, it's been it's been a fun process. I I still consider myself kind of a noob when it comes to modding, but I really feel like this mod is. It's done well, and more importantly, it's done correctly. I learned an awful lot about modding during this process. You know, hey, I nav meshed successfully. Uh, and if you talk to people, nav meshing is like one of those things that most people just don't like, and I understand why. Um, but I learned a lot of, you know, keyboard shortcuts and, and how to move things around and how to, how to uh, hide things, and uh, it really helps to speed up the process. So, as far as this series go, goes, I mean, it's called Taj's Cabin, the building of a Skyrim Messy House mod. Uh, you know, this is the final episode because it is done. It's built. There's nothing more to add, nothing more to change, nothing to fix. It is, it is done. Um, there may be a couple of, I guess you could say, follow-up videos. I may do a, a video like a walking tour. But it won't be part of this series because it won't be, you know, oh, here's what I did differently because it's it's finally done. Um, what else? There, there are a couple of other things I may change with the mod, and one of those is being the name, if you can believe it or not. Uh, uh, there, I, I don't know exactly how I missed this before, but there is a mod on the Nexus called cozy lakeside cabin it's not quite the same as lakeside cabin but it's awfully close and i may end up changing the name again so if there is i'll do a little update video uh if i end up doing that um let's see uh, what else is there well i guess i guess that's about it um yeah i, I mean other than a other than a name change like I said, I, I may just do uh, another uh, another video. It's just a you know walking tour, and I may do something like Ruby's Cabin, where it's, there's no narration. I'm just gonna walk around and show things, or I may do one where it is narrated and I'm pointing things out. Here's this, here's that. But I'll probably do something like that just for people that don't want to have to sit through the whole series. So I guess that's going to be it then. It's uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited for this to be done. There's a few things I have to do before I can bring this into my game to where my current character can start using it. It's a little bit of a tricky process where so you have to go into an interior cell and then make some saves when you activate it. It's, it's a little complicated. Uh, and on top of that, I'm probably going to have to run Dindalot again. Because now I've introduced all this extra stuff to the outside world. But that's got nothing to do with the building of the house. So, with that, uh, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And I hope you enjoyed the series. I know I have. Um, but it is, it is done. It's, it's time to bring the series to a close. Uh, but I may have some things cooking in the works in the background i may have another series that i'm going to be well let's just say check back to the channel every once in a while i may have something else working in the works so again thanks for watching and uh i uh, hope to see you again soon